Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. We are here for day five of the uh, challenge here that I've set to see if I can hit uh, rank one mythic and standard. And currently doing best of three, just in preparation for the qualifier weekend that's uh, coming up this weekend. So before we get started, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing or maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys are the backbone of the channel. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you. Just uh, kind of getting in here to the deck. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, the deck list should be in the description, both in um, a link for moxfield.com and then also untapped.gg. And then I also do have a playlist here of all the videos for this uh, challenge. So you can kind of check out previous videos if you want. I did also launch my memberships. So if you're interested and consider becoming a member, um, you can get access to uh, videos early and then a couple other perks. So check it out on my channel if you're interested. Um, so I made a couple changes here to the list and I want to give a shout out here. Thank you guys for giving your advice and your comments. Um, especially about uh, Doorkeeper Thrall. I did add two copies to the sideboard, and I think it is going to be a really, really great card against some of the matchups, specifically Domain, um, potentially some of the other kind of uh, combo strategies involving creatures and Reanimator and um, Cauldron specifically, Discover Combos. So a lot of stuff that we saw yesterday should, would be very good against, actually. So... Anyways, I just want to thank you guys so much for giving comments and feedback. I do read all the comments and it really is helpful because I'm still trying to get my feet wet here and figure out kind of all the sideboarding options here for best of three. So it's very much a work in progress. Um, that said, I think that's going to help. Let's jump into some matches. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to... The little more icon um, you can actually donate via super thanks so if you want to leave a tip um, I greatly appreciate it you don't have to but if you want to show your support and your thanks there's another way to do that and you can do that right it in the um, through YouTube here so all right let's get into some games but yeah very excited here for the upcoming weekend um, definitely have a way to go here but on the back of that 6-0 plan, getting qualified with the uh, the main deck, really, really hoping to put up a strong finish here coming up. So, very excited. I hope you guys have had a nice week so far. And, uh, yeah, if anyone else is going to be playing in the qualifier, would be interested to see what you're playing. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got two land ready to go. Up against Mono Red. Okay. I wasn't sure how much Mono Red there would be, um, you know, the running into here potentially at like the tournament level. And I actually had taken out two copies of Knockout Blow to make room for the Doorkeeper Thralls. So maybe that was a bit uh, preemptive here. But I think that uh, the Lantern Flares from the board are going to be pretty good also. This, I think, is a great chance to be able to use March on their Feldon. Um, and I think we want to probably just cut the Brutal Cathar. It's pretty bad in this matchup. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, Thalia here feels pretty good. We could go Adversary and force them to try to like remove it, which is not too bad. We've got a little more mana coming up, so we could potentially play this on four. But I think Thalia is just all around a great card here, so just getting that going feels pretty good. Kind of ties up their mana a little bit. So they are representing 
Either play with fire or monstrous rage, something like that. We're not going to bite. We're just going to try to go for Adeline next turn. Gonna try to race here a little bit. So yeah, they're representing, I guess maybe Wishstalker Frenzy? Yeah. Now I think we wanna get Adversary going. We just kind of are a little bit out of time. We're down to eight, so let's get that going. And then I guess we could Try to hold back for Swift Spear. Um, I think... I think we just want to try to race. Hopefully they can't get there. So we could trade for Swift Spear here, at least threaten. Um, if they have another like Monstrous Rage, it's a bit unfortunate. But any kind of removal that they have for it would pretty much be used on it anyways. We can try to just like race instead if we don't think they can get there. I guess if they have like Monstrous Rage specifically here, they're pushing for... I guess we'd go down to one. Yeah, I think there's enough of a benefit here to try to make the trade. This way, if they want to like use the removal on it anyways, they just have to do that and then we don't get the extra damage. So yeah, we're saving ourselves two damage here from the Swift Spear anyways. Okay, now I think we want to hold back maybe with the human, try to set that up to block Swift Spear. Let's see, I guess we're pushing five, dropping them down to nine. And then we can just like trade Sentinel here if they want to push. Yeah, I think we're definitely racing, especially because of the Phoenix Chick, so I guess we're just pushing with everything here. So if we just like full send, we're representing Leal, they probably trade or block. Um, if they've got something, I suppose they can block the Vanguard. Yeah, I think we just push here and then can just replay. So the question is, do they have like play with fire? And I guess now we just like try to play around Squee.
Okay, and they drew the they drew the burn. So we almost got there. Not quite. Um, okay, so we're bringing in Lantern Flare for sure. Probably Flanker as well. And then... Surge of Salvation. Um, cutting Brutal Cathar. Probably Hopeful Initiate. And that leaves like two more cards to cut here. Not really sure. Um, definitely want to have a decent amount of one drops. We, we could also consider bringing in more marches as well. I think the sentinels are pretty good because they can deal with like recurring spells from their yard. I like all of our two drops. We might not need flanker here. I mean, it does give us like the life gain in the scry but it could just be a little bit sort of, it's kind of expensive. So maybe we just leave that out. Not sure if that's right or not. Um, the other consideration, do we bring in like glass casket or March? And I think maybe, let's see, we've still got, we have 12 one drops. I think having access to the marches actually does feel pretty good. So I think maybe we, if we shave like one inspector and then maybe like one knight errant and bring in the two marches, I kind of like that. Just having some more interaction. Fortunately, stuck on one land, so we're gonna have to mulligan here. All right, that'll work. And I think here, yeah, just because we don't have like the double white, it's a little tough to go into all three of our one drops. So we probably just go like veteran into warden. Maybe we cut the inspector. It's kind of unfortunate because it's nice with warden, but could also like start with um, Warden, and then go Inspector. But I think it's probably the weakest card here. <laughs> like, if I knew I was drawing another planes, I probably would have kept it, but... Sentinel's still pretty good. March is nice. Um, what do we want to do? We could just remove Feldon. I kind of want to get Warden going, though, in case we don't draw another land. Question is, do we push? I think it's early enough that... Uh, Pumping up Warden feels right. Also because we have this Lantern Flare. Uh, let's look for some more land here. Yeah, and then I think our plan is, like, next turn to go for Knight Errant. Oh, 
I guess we could march for Feldon. I still think with the lantern, lantern Flare we're doing okay. And just to try to get this Night Errant going. But yeah, since we can only play like Veteran this turn, it's probably right to just march their Feldon. So I think we just um, push, see what they do, and then hold up march. Otherwise, we just like play veteran and just like sort of sit there and hope. But that feels pretty soft. We could just draw into land. I think we just get rid of Feldon here. Man, and that is just punishing. Um, all right, well, I guess we gotta take a turn off here to go for Phantom. <sighs> yeah, we're really kind of getting down to it. So I think, God, can we take another full attack? It's getting pretty ugly. <clears throat> but we want to be able to get Knight Errant going, so I think we just attack here. So they're pushing for six, we drop to four, and then Lantern Flare our way up a little bit. Adeline is a nice pickup. <sighs> Do we need to Lantern Flare this turn? I guess next turn they're coming in with a lot of damage. Just off of like Kumano plus Foundry. So if we play Adeline, we have three blockers. They're still pushing a little bit. We're gonna have more, I think maybe the play here is Adeline because that will give us more attackers and then if we can survive, we can Lantern Flare and try to get back up. It's a little bit, a little bit risky. But I think this maybe gives us the best hope. And then if they, they draw like nothing here, <laughs> we maybe have a chance. Might have been right to just use Lantern Flare there instead. I'm kind of unsure. Alright, so code breaker. I think we go to one here. That keeps our sentinel around, and then we can use lantern flare next turn. So 
now we can Lantern Flare for three. And I think we hold back with Sentinel, just push with Adeline here. And then hold up Lantern Flare. We could also do it prematurely, just so that we don't die to a top deck. If they top deck, like, play with fire or lightning strike, that might be correct. And then just get rid of the Phoenix Chick. That's probably right, actually. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. We're just like holding on by our fingernails here. Okay, looks like it's good though. So I think we just push with Adeline and then can we afford the Knight Errant here? Like, we want to go to find it to get, like, uh, some more life linkers, but it is a little dangerous. If we activate Foundry and push with everything, this is four, then five. So they have to block this. And we have five, seven more left over. So they can take everything and like just block the Adeline. That might be right though. <laughs> then we'll have, um, and they won't be able to double block. I think that actually gives us the best bet of just ending the game. It's just pushing with everything here. One has to block Adeline, right? Yeah, I think they're forced to block Adeline here, unless they've got something in hand. Yep, nice. All right, on to game three. I don't feel like we need any other changes here. Everything kind of feels right. I guess we could bring in like glass casket. That's the other consideration. But like having instant speed with like March feels just like a little bit better. All right, opening hand looks great. You 
It is worth noting we could have held up March there if they had like turn two filled on. And maybe that would have been better. But I think just getting on the board feels pretty good. Also getting the play with fire out of their hand also feels pretty good. So I like veteran. We could go veteran hold up March. And then just use that to get rid of Scoundrel. It's actually not terrible. Other option would be just play Thalia. And then they can't push with Scoundrel unless they remove our Thalia, which feels pretty good. Yeah, I think Thalia's a little better, but it's close. Now they've got to like take a turn off to kill the Thalia instead of developing their board. Unless they have, I guess they could have like end the festivities, that would be a little awkward. Yeah, and I feel pretty good time walking in there. Uh, no land drop on their part, though. So I think we just do that again. Probably just Adeline here. I guess we could also march the Godric out of the way. Like, Veteran plus March feels pretty good too. <sighs> then we're like really soft too in the festivities. But. I kind of like getting rid of their Godric. I feel like that's a huge threat. So I think that Veteran plus March is a little better. And then just sitting back with Dahlia here. Oh god, I keep forgetting the, <laughs> the tax on Dahlia. We can't afford it. Oh, that's awkward. So yeah, I guess we can March for the Scoundrel but not the, the Godric. That was a huge misplay. Forgot about, keep forgetting that Thalia attacks. Ugh. Okay, yeah, so definitely probably should have just Adeline last turn. That would have been better. Might be able to recover here, but. Although now we can march. <laughs> this is funny, actually, this is great. All right, so they let the Thalia die. Now we can march the Godric as planned. That's great. Although the question is, do we use Thalia to pay for it? Or do we use Copper Coat? I think we use Thalia here because like, they have four mana. So yeah, we are taxing their land a little bit. But Copper Coat seems like a pretty nice benefit for Adeline. I guess it's close. Maybe it's better to keep the Thalia. Yeah, I mean, it taxes them. They've got four mana. It's close. I think I'm going to keep the Copper Coat around. I'm not sure if it's correct. Now just slamming Adeline. Hopefully no play with fire. Yeah, these marches are just awesome. Like the instant speed interaction feels so much better than other stuff. So yeah, I think now we're just racing. Um, we can leave, I guess we can leave the human back to block their scoundrel. That feels pretty good.
They're gonna try to remove Copper Coat here. I guess that's like they remove Copper Coat and then just get us. So I guess that kind of forces our hand to either block with Copper Coat or just like let it through or like march in response. Do we really want to march this though? We could just take it and then like I guess we wish we would have attacked last turn. But like their attack here like represents that they have removal for Copper Coat. Um, I think like seeing this attack actually I think we we don't block because we we don't want to lose Copper Coat and like we can play Copper Coat next turn. So yeah, this isn't great. Um because I don't really want to use throw pitch a copper coat to get rid of this scoundrel. So I think we just I think we take it actually. Okay, that's great. So now we can play copper coat into Knight Errant, and that feels pretty good. <clears throat> So we assume they have like lightning strike or at least play with fire in hand. So I feel like they wouldn't have attacked with scoundrel like into the 2-1 the human without some kind of backup. Just fell down. I don't really like giving him six cards <laughs> to look at. Uh, and like we are gaining life, but like not that much. <sighs> I think we just want to march that fell down, honestly. So I think we just take this hit instead of giving that kind of selection. <laughs> I think we just take a turn off and just play out our creatures. Um, I guess we can attack before playing the Sentinel. So now I think we just push with Knight Errant. Maybe in Veteran. And then I think just maybe Knight Errant here. Can also make some trades with Copper Coat as well. And I think at this point, like, we have more creatures going. I'm actually willing to trade these Copper Coats if they want to, like, make some trades here. Even trading off some 1-1s one here is probably fine. I think, actually, I'll just push with these three, see what they do. 
This way we can like march if they try to like double up on tokens. Okay, I think we can also, we can get rid of the Wicked token, right? So if we march the Wicked token, we just get the benefit here against Scoundrel. I think this works. Yeah, that's going to do it. Nice. Yeah, March is just so good. Like, I am so happy to be running that card. Alright, opening hand looks great. Yeah, let's lead out here with Initiate over Warden just because we've got like Sentinel on two. I think we can now, we can finesse here, see if they fall for it. Actually, <laughs> it's pretty obvious we don't have anything, but we can still attack. You never know. Free damage is, <laughs> free damage is free damage. I was gonna say we go for Brutal Cathar here, but we can also just Knight Errant instead. Um, I do wanna get rid of their Warden, <clears throat> but I think we can still do that later. And I think, yeah, Adeline is good here too, but I think just going Knight Errant is a little better. Can be a little bit more explosive. Otherwise we go like Brutal Cathar and then like push with both of these and then grow the initiate a little bit which is not too bad i think knight Aaron is just better though yeah adversary feels pretty good um do we want initiate or inspector i don't think so i think we just want the life gain i think we want veteran plus adversary
So the question now is, do we go for, like, Brutal Cathar push? I mean, we're pushing a lot of damage with Cathar here. That feels pretty good. Like, we get to grow the initiate push for... What? Four, six, nine, ten damage? Yeah, that's gotta be right. Then we can, like, possibly, like, draw into, like, adversary mana next turn. Like, they'll have Warden next turn, but I think this has gotta be correct. Are they going for another Knight Errant? Sort of looks like it. It's a little bit ballsy. Especially if they don't have like a one drop here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very, very aggressive. All right, so we've got the Aganjo push. I think it's just adversary here, right? Because, like, they block here and they're still taking three, five. Yeah, they're dead. Yep, they realized it too. Okay, so in comes Doorkeeper Thrall. Um, destroy evil. Probably Glass Casket. Lantern Flare. Probably March. Yeah, we're bringing in a ton of stuff here. What do we cut? Um, Sentinel is less important. It's not bad, but it's... Actually, we can cut Thalia here. Thalia is not great against them. What else do we cut? Can probably cut a couple inspectors. Um, since we're bringing in our own doorkeeper thralls, like our knight errants are slightly less good. Same with Brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar is still really pretty good, but they're gonna have like access to four copies probably of, or some number of um, Lithomantic Barrage. So that should be a consideration. Yeah, I could see like cutting maybe like an inspector or two, maybe cutting cutting Knight Errant seems rough, but like if we've got Doorkeeper Thrall and we want to stop them from doing it. Maybe we cut like Brutal Cathar. If they're bringing in like more removal. And then maybe like one Knight Errant and one Sentinel, something like that. Okay, this is a pretty weak hand. But we have like some stuff to do. We, we've got Iganja, we have Mishra's Foundry. I feel like we, this is enough to keep, like if we just don't get flooded. <laughs> and now we get flooded. I think we're totally willing to trade Warden for both their guys. If they want to make that trade, I'm fine with it.
It's not bad. Um, hmm. I guess the question is, like, do we lantern flare one of their guys to stop them from doing case? I kind of want to be able to get Warden, but that might be unrealistic. Ooh, glass casket's really good, actually. Yeah, I think we Lantern Flare one of their tokens just to like slow them down and prevent them from going turning case on next turn because we know we'll have Glass Casket for Warden. So like it's not amazing, but I think it's good enough. Do they have the Knight Errant to go with it? Looks like they do. Yeah, there's the Knight Errant. Unfortunately. And they've got Recruiter. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, this is a nightmare hand. Yeah, I think we're probably super dead next turn, but... We still just Glass Casket here. That's good. I don't know if we'll have time to actually use it, but... Yeah, I think we're just super dead. We really need Doorkeeper throw out, like, big time. We're just taking lethal here, right? Yeah, okay. On to game three. I uh, don't think I really want to change anything here. I guess we could go for invasion, but that is a little bit... Like, it's good if we can get it, get it going, but that's a big if, getting through. I think I like things where they're at right now. Okay, this is a little bit slow, but I think we've got some stuff going, so we can prevent the um, early demolition. March that. I actually kind of like that. Problem is, like, that, that lets them go with um, possibly, like, going into, like, demolition next turn. But I think it, this is a, a big target to get rid of, anyways, and then we can, like, cleanly play Adeline. So I think I'm just going to march it.
Oh, that's a really nice target here for uh, Casket. good. I think I'm starting to finally get the hang of this best of three thing. Uh, it's definitely a different beast than best of one, but uh, I'm stoked. I think there's like a real chance that this deck does well with um, the big tournament this weekend. Alright, opening hand looks great. And, like, I can't say enough good things about March of Otherworldly Light. Like, this card is just so good. All right, Mono Red. So there's a consideration here to like go veteran plus march just to get rid of the kumano um or i guess whatever they play it's kind of interesting i actually could see doing that because like cathar is not that great in this matchup so i feel like um veteran plus march is a safer bet here And then I think we wait to see what they play, because we can march whatever they play. Yeah, that's a really good march target, so that feels great. Man, march is such a beating. I just love it. Bye, fell down. Feels good. I think we just want to get Warden going here. Threaten to like put it out of range. Um, do we want another Iganjo? Not really. Grab Inspector and Adeline here. Since we've got Warden going. That was a really nice draw by our opponent. So max life gain here is probably Inspector plus Knight Errant. Um, can we push? I guess Adeline isn't bad. We're still gaining two life there. The real question is if they can get Godric into the air. 
Like we could use Knight Errant to go and try to find another another veteran, which would be amazing. So if we just do like a full tap down for Knight Errant, try to find another veteran and then go like veteran into inspector. That could be pretty good. But I feel like pushing here is pretty important too. Yeah, I think it's close. I think I'm just gonna go with the Adeline play because it represents a really big threat the next turn that they kind of have to deal with. And now I think we just push with like Sentinel. I guess we could also go Knight Errant here too. That's pretty good. So I think we push with Knight Errant and then just um, go Knight Errant for the after that. Actually, this might be a little bit dangerous. So we, we gain a life here. So I guess we're, we'd be taking, we can only potentially block one creature. So we'd be taking an extra one from Kumano. Um, so is it worth trying to just have one blocker here? If they can get Godric into the air, we're probably dead. But if they can't, if we block there, we're taking five. Yeah, it's not great. I think instead we probably just try to get Warden into the air. Probably something like this instead. Night Errant is pretty good. We don't have we don't have time for two more Night Errants though, I think is the problem. Do they have another Oh, yuck. <clears throat> so I think that just does it, right? 4-7. Yeah, that's going to do it. Okay, so let's bring in March. Bring in Flare. Bring in Casket. Actually, I don't know about Casket. Casket is decent. Um... Probably Surge. And I don't know about Flanker. Like, it just feels a little bit too slow. And then let's cut Initiate. Probably, like, one Inspector. Maybe a Sun Gold Sentinel. And like a knight errant. That feels pretty good. Yeah, because now we've got like casket, four marches, lantern flare. Sentinel's still pretty good here though. So maybe we want the other sentinel in. But I think we just we want a lot of one drops too. So let's just go keep it with this. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got Inspector into either Thali or, ad or Adversary, just depending on what they play. I think if they play Kumano here, I'm going to go Adversary. Because then that means like they can't as easily play like their own Adversary or Feldon if we have like the threat of like just gaining life 
So that's, this means they'll want to take a turn off to kill this. Um, so I think this is just better. And then if it survives, we can like hold up Surge. Yeah, they're <laughs> they are one hundred percent killing it. Makes sense. But like this is nice because then we like prevented them from playing a good creature here, so that feels good. And now let's just get Thalia going. So I don't think we're blocking Kumano because they can like threaten. I guess if they attack with it, we'll know that they have Monsters Rage. Um, but I think we just get in with Inspector here. So like hopefully they don't have Godric. Alright, so they've got Monstrous Rage. Yeah, and if they want to tap out just going to Monstrous Rage, like, I'm totally fine with that. So the question is now, like, do we race or do we just try to like march that i think we we've got to be racing here right like we can still march for one if they have like a swift spear or something like that so problem is like they've got so much so many cards in hand i feel like it's not safe to hold back thalia here just to try to block their kumano because they could just um, burn out the uh, the vanguard and then blow us out and like I, we couldn't like we could respond but like I think that it's just better to just, just race here especially since we have a, another copper coat coming up Although now it would take like their full turn to get rid of the copper coat. So question here, is it worth marching the swift spear? Um, I guess we could also march Kumano too. Come to think of it. Maybe we just march Kumano here. Like we cut the, probably the Surge. I think we do actually. Feels really good. Now we just keep pushing. God, March is so good. I just love that card. Also, having Kumano off the table is really good now that we've got veterans. So if they kill it, we can just like replay it. I think I just do this pre combat um, in case they've got nonsense so we can just ensure the life gain. 
And I think their plan here is to burn out our vanguard. But I don't think we actually care. Because, like, I guess if they, like, burn the vanguard out and, like, block Thalia, we're pushing two da- eh, yeah, I guess we're only pushing two damage there. It's kind of, it's kind of bad. Man, <laughs> this one Swift Spear is holding down our whole team. Uh, it's not a great attack, that we only, we're only pushing two damage, dropping to six. I think we just sit and see what they do. Oh, God. Hmm. Cause like we know we we know they've got removal for Vanguard. Yeah, I think we sit, unfortunately. I think we play a better long game than they do, though. Alright, so I think we wait one more turn and try to set up with Adeline. Yeah, there's the play with fire that we knew they had the whole time. Do we care about their Swift Spear? I don't think so. I think we just take the Swift Spear hit and then maybe like block this with Inspector. I guess they could like get us with uh, in the festivities, but yeah, now we just play Adeline and take this all the way to the bank. So if they don't have anything in hand and we swing out here with everything, they can't even double block our vanguard because we're just pushing lethal. So I think that's the play. So they've got, okay, they had the extra removal. Fine. But we're still in a pretty good position here. And that is definitely going to do it. Nice! 3-0. Feels good. Well, <laughs> I forget. We have one more game to go, so not quite 3-0 yet. But the feeling is there. All right, opening hand looks great. Question is, do we hold up March or go for Warden? Because like this would be a really good turn to like March their Feldon if that's what they've got. Especially being on like the back foot here, we could just go like march. Probably like toss the sentinel or something like that. Or even actually toss the warden. Um, I kind of like that. Like takes their momentum off and then like turn two we just go like sentinel. Or possibly even like vanguard.
Yeah, I think I actually like March here. Since, especially since we're on the draw. Do we still march? I think we do. Um, yeah, because then they probably just burn out our vanguard next turn. That's that's the one downside. I think we march. Uh, let's get rid of Warden, I guess. vanguard um especially since we have another vanguard and then like it's better like if we draw into adeline to protect it a little bit so i think we just go vanguard here Also not a bad idea to just, just trade here with Kumano. Just slow him down a little bit longer. Like if I knew if I had the planes for sure, or the land, I think holding it would make sense. But here I think actually just slowing them down feels good. Probably now Sun Gold over veteran veterans nice but like i think we just want to be mana efficient here and start picking apart their graveyard We could go Adeline, but like we're never blocking, so I think the play here is actually Veteran plus Vanguard. Hmm. That does give like another turn to like do stuff though. And we're gonna have to start racing at some point, so maybe it is better to go Adeline first. Thing is, if they have like Witch Doctor Frenzy. Or they could have like Lithomatic Barrage. They could have a lot of stuff. They probably just want to go ahead and get their... Oh, actually, let's see. Yeah, I think maybe Veteran plus Vanguard is a little better. It's close. Hopefully they're out of gas here. Okay, so they must have drawn into like Monstrous Rage or Play With Fire or something like that. I think we're just taking it here though, because like if we can just get one attack in, we're, we're in business. Especially since we have the Lantern Flare. Like, we just don't want to even, like, open the door to losing our Adeline. And now we can Lantern Flare and feel pretty good. I think we hold back with a Human Token.
And then I think we we either march Phoenix. I think let's try to land or fly their Kumano. block like that and just see what they've got and we can like respond okay monstrous rage Let's Lantern Flare that. Yeah, that's probably going to be enough to just get there. Um, we can just push. I guess we drop him to seven. Yeah, might as well actually use Warden here. Like, there's nothing wrong with pushing there. I think it would be fine either way, honestly. But yeah, they're, they're just done. Okay. Nice. Got the 3-0. Feels good. March is definitely the MVP. No question. Alright, thanks guys for watching. Let's go ahead and check the stats. All right, so we are 72% win rate, 23 wins, and 9 losses. Um, yeah, matchups are still feeling really good. It looks like Mono Red and Boros are both looking great. And just got to work a little bit on the uh, domain matchups and some of kind of like the, the weirder sort of like combo matchups. But I think the Doorkeeper Thrall is going to help with that. So hopefully that'll work out well. Um, but yeah, feeling good. Just kind of getting some more reps in. So I want to thank you guys again for watching and supporting. You guys are awesome, and we will see you here in the next one. Mm -hmm.